Hello again, everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a little art with me and it's going to be messing with some watercolors with a very specific purpose in mind. Um, and that is basically to create some backgrounds for similar pieces as this. So I'll, I'll tell you the background <laughs> behind these little pieces. So um, as I've said before on the channel, I'm enrolled in a class online called Fodder School. And all of the classes have been so inspirational and have really um, driven me to be really creative in ways that I wouldn't normally be creative um, and create things I wouldn't normally create. So these were uh, part of the lesson for February. And um, basically the lesson was to make some backgrounds and then put different pieces together in little what, what they called assemblages. So I'm definitely going to put a link to the Fodder School class down below. I think you can still register if you're interested. It's such a wonderful class. Um, and I, you know, I want to attribute everything to them about, you know, coming to these little assemblages in the first place. But what I want to do with you today is create some backgrounds like these, not probably not like this one, but like this. So, um, originally this was supposed to be, I mean, the, the lesson was taught with, uh, little paper dolls, uh, from Tim Holtz or vintage photographs, but I, I like animals more than people in my art. Um, that might be true in real life too. Uh, but I had a bunch of, uh, wrapping paper with, these little images of animals and birds, mostly birds. There's only one animal represented here, but I have literally dozens of these now. <laughs> um, so I uh, fussy cut out some little birds and animals from the wrapping paper that I had. And um, I did look up these images and they are copyright free. So, so that's good. <laughs> but you should always make sure that that's the case if it's going to be art you're gonna be um, making, not just for yourself. So, uh, so instead of people, I chose these little birds. And then uh, we also made a lot of little uh, leaves and foliage and all kinds of things. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, but the reason why I ended up coming to these is I had all these little squares of watercolor that I had cut out. Um, I, I had intended to make it make the, the little watercolor pieces into, uh, incorporate them in some way in collages. And um, once I started putting these little animals and birds on these little squares and rectangles that I had cut out, uh, things just really came together. And I really, really liked this look and I liked the, the whole idea behind it of having these natural shapes and leaves and things with the birds and then having just these sort of abstract little watercolor squares. So I'm gonna show you how I made the watercolor squares underneath. So basically I just started with a big sheet of paper and then, um, then I made little shapes and then I cut it out. But I'm going to go through that with you. Um, but first I wanted to show you my, my inspiration for, for doing this with you. And part of why I have not done a lot of Art With Me's on my channel is that, um, oh, and then I didn't do some embroidering around. This is just a back stitch with some embroidery thread around the edges, if you wanted to know that too. Um, and then I, before I stitched them, I put everything down with a glue stick. So just so you know that part of the process. And, um, forgot what I was saying. Oh, the reason why I don't generally do art with me is, is that uh, my process is such that I generally come to something for a short period of time, leave it, and then come back later. And there's a lot of different layers and, and things usually take a long time. So it's not really conducive to doing a lot of art with me's. Um, the watercolor landscapes may be more so, but I haven't been doing as many of those lately. So, um, so let's go ahead and get into the watercolor. I just wanted to show you real quick how I fussy cut all these little birds, you know, fussy cutting. Um, and this is pretty thin paper these are made out of, so you kind of have to, I kind of have to be careful with them. But, uh, you know, in front of the TV in the evening, this is a great way to 
be a little bit creative and not just look at the internet all the time. Oh, and I have all these eggs. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with these eggs yet. <laughs> these bird eggs. Uh, and then there's some little animals back here. Um, so that's just where I keep all of those. And that's, I'm probably going to be making more. And okay, I'm going to get out my watercolor sheet here. So this is essentially just a sheet of Canson XL watercolor paper. And this is what I used for the other two uh, sheets that I made and basically there I've only that I've done tons of these with only two sheets of, of this paper so far uh, two different colors so I'll show you just real quickly with these I'll get um, a representative of each color here that I did so so this one I used three I actually used four colors because I did use gold in here so I used two similarly like same color family colors. And then I use one contrasting color. And I'll show you how I did that. Um, and then once I was done watercoloring, I cut these out. Um, I think I actually made the marks on them before I cut them out, which is, if we have time, I'll do, do some marks as well and show you that. So this was Payne's Gray. Um, what was the other color? It was a, these were all Roman Schmall colors. So this was Indian Red, Payne's Gray, and then one of their, one of their purplish gray colors all together. And then this one is all Isaro watercolors on this. this is probably not a good representation because you can't see a lot of the background. Let me get a bigger one. Um, so with this one, I used a green, a pink, and then um, sort of a sparkly brown. And then I made marks over the top. That's what those little gold circles are. So what I, I'm gonna try and follow the same kind of formula with these. So I am going to, uh, today I'm gonna use the some ocean paper and case for making watercolors. And I've already uh, added some water to the colors that I plan on using because you really do need your colors to be really wet for this because um, it uses a lot of pigment now, or at least I like a lot of pigment. And I think I'm also going to put a little water in the gold here because I do like some sparkle in there. So I will add some additional gold. This is, um, these are all handmade watercolors. This one, this gold is by Wildthorn. This is Pacific by Case for Making. This is Stone Ochre by Ocean Paper. And this is the color Glass by Ocean Paper. So essentially I'm using two bluish greens in the Pacific and the glass, and then I have a contrasting color with the stone ochre, and then I'm gonna add a little gold if, if I think that's necessary. So you could draw out squares and rectangles beforehand, but I just kind of free form it. Uh, the first sheet I made, my squares and rectangles ended up smaller because I was not anticipating what I would use them for because I figured I would just use them for small pieces of collage butter. The, the second sheet I did, I made some larger squares and rectangles, which I think I'm going to incorporate today because it's kind of nice to have a variety of sizes. Okay, and what I usually do, or what I did with the last two sheets, is I'll start with one main color and then drop in a little bit of the other two colors, and then I switch the main color around. So basically with these three colors, I rotate around which one I use as the main color. You'll, you'll see as I get going. So I'm actually gonna start with the stone ochre color. So you really do wanna make sure you have a lot of pigment and water on your brush. And I'm just gonna start up here in the corner. And I kind of gauge, you know, how much water should I add? Like here, I'm gonna add water instead of pigment to see what it looks like when I water that out. And I am putting my hand on the paper here. so. There may, there may end up being some skin oils in there. Okay, I'm gonna, going back into the pigment, doing a little bit of that. Okay, so while that's still wet, I'm gonna rinse off my brush here. While that's still wet, I'm gonna put a little bit of this glass color in here, just drop it in because it will sort of bloom out and do its own thing in there. And then I'm gonna put some of this Pacific color in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some gold as well. Usually I just add a little bit of gold. You can see that really pushed, pushed the color away. Maybe I'll put it on both sides. So that's gonna have a completely different look to it because of the way the color got pushed around by the gold. 
So I'll have to remember that when I go on to the next color. So now I'm going to start with the glass color and I'm going to do sort of a narrow rectangle here. And I try to leave a little bit of white space so that I can cut there. Let's see, I'm going to add a little bit more water and pigment. And this is great for when I'm, I'm busy with other things. And now I'm going to be dropping the other two colors in here. This is great when I'm busy with other things and I don't have a lot of time to do art. Um, so I can just kind of play around and not think about it too much. And then I am going to add a little bit of gold here in the middle. Yeah, that really is a pushy gold. And um, because of that, I'm going to see if I can actually push some of this other pigment back into that space so that we just don't have white spaces there. See how that goes. And you never really know how it's going to end up until it dries. So, um, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so now I'm going to do the third color here down. And I just eyeball the shapes. I don't really, um, I don't need it to be exact, but I do try to make them, you know, fairly, not, not too crazy wonky. And so this one, this color kind of disappears a little bit in there, but you can see a little bit of milkiness there. And then I'm going to add some of that stone ochre. And then let's go ahead and do the gold again and see, yeah, it's just so, so repellent. <laughs> but I kind of like the effect of it because it kind of creates this sort of um, ethereal feel around there. And these colors are a little bit um, granulating and somewhat opaque because some of these are, have white in them. I've actually found that the granulating and opaque colors work really well for this. Okay, so now I'm going back into that first color, Stone Ochre. And then here I am going to make another larger piece here. And you have to remember that these little in-between spaces, if they're smaller, that's going to result in, um, obviously, a smaller square that you're going to be working with or rectangle that you're going to be working with. But you can also incorporate that into another piece. Like, so I could make this a rectangle that, that's this big and then make this whole thing one piece that I cut out. I've done that before as well. If the pieces were just too small to really use. Okay, I'm going to add some more of that. And you can see, even though I'm dotting it in, it looks very different when you... Um, when it starts to dry, because this one up here is starting to dry. Let me mix those together there. Let's go with a little bit of gold up here. And it doesn't seem to be reacting as much with the um, stone ochre color, but those blues, those blues are just like m completely moving away from that. Okay, this is another reason why I don't always do art with me is because sometimes I get interrupted and then I have to start again. So uh, as you've seen, some of these are drying a little bit. This is actually good because this gives us some advanced dry time on these if I wanted to do some um, mark making at the end. So, okay, what color were we on? We were on stone ochre, so I'm going to go to the lighter blue. And I think I'm going to put that here in this little space. And so basically the main color is just, it's just the main color that's changing every time and then I'm adding the other two colors. And I kind of liked the, the two similar colors and one um, sort of contrasting color just because um, it, it gives a little bit more variety to the one color that you have a couple of different shades of. And then uh, the contrast is, is really nice. You just kind of have to find ones that work well together. But I don't find that to be too hard, especially when you have as large of a watercolor collection as I do. Okay, and I really like this gold in here. 
Um, and I actually am not minding how things are drying when they are being pushed away by the gold. So I'm going to keep adding the gold as well. Okay, so now I'm to this darker Pacific color. And um, let's go down. I'm going to, let's do another one roughly this size. Maybe I'll go down a little bit further so that we can have just a little bit more of a rectangle on this one. But yeah, like I was saying, this is a really nice sort of meditative practice that does not require a lot of thought. But um, once I found a use for for these little squares, I was super happy about that because I really like how they incorporated into those little assemblages, but also uh, it sort of gives me a whole new world to explore with different color combinations and um, and then when you combine it with all of the, uh, those were stencil, uh, watercolor through stencils, sprays through stencils and that sort of thing. Um, and it just creates a really interesting effect to have those all together. All right. And what's kind of nice about the gold too, is like here, there was a puddle of color. And so when I added the uh, gold there, it kind of dispersed the color a little bit. So that's kind of fun. And I had no idea that that gold was going to do this because I've never used that gold in this way before. But um, it's kind of cool to find out how different colors interact with each other. But you're definitely getting a lot of granulation in here. Um, I like interesting watercolors that have a little bit more something something going on with them, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, rather than just plain watercolors. Um, although they definitely have their purpose. So let's get this color down here. And as you can see, I'm using quite a bit of water with these and actually I need to add more water to that so that I can have it wet in the pan because I really want it to be kind of flowy so that all the colors flow where they want to go. Um, and then let's add this glass color. The glass color gets kind of lost when it's in with the darker bluish green, but um, but I definitely think it is adding a nuance that you wouldn't get with just this color, this specific color alone. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna go back to the gold. And see, the gold is not pushing the pink away as much, so that kind of makes things interesting as well. I'm really loving this color combination. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to Pacific, or I'm sorry, glass, this lighter color for another square. Let's go here. I'm actually gonna go down with a rectangle. And for a while when I got this color, I thought it might be a little too light, but I think it really is actually quite beautiful. But even though this is fairly simple, it does take a little bit of time because, you know, you're going through the entire sheet of paper and putting these um, squares and rectangles down. And it's really just a time to kind of enjoy the process. All right, so now we're onto this dark teal color again. And let's fill in this other space here. And I'm not sure whether this would, would be too small on its own. I think it's probably a, still a decent size. I'm leaving that so we can create a rectangle down here. Um, I try not to make all of them the same size because it is nice to have variety, but you know, sometimes you're gonna repeat the same kind of size when you're doing something like this, and that's fine. There is really no right or wrong here. And I've really been liking doing more abstract things like this, mostly because, I mean, you, you can just really go with the flow on this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna move this up a little bit because you're down at the bottom there. And Ugh, my environment is so dry, especially in the winter. It's really kind of hard to 
keep things wet. <laughs> Okay. And you can also vary the water amount that you're using too. So you can make some a little bit more opaque. You can um, make some really watered, at, watered down. Um, this one's a little more opaque, at least with the stone ochre color. Okay, added a little bit of gold down there. So I'm actually gonna go up here and complete up here. Let's go in with the glass color. And this uses a lot of pigment, just FYI. You're gonna be using a lot of pigment by doing things like this. I'm gonna make another big square. And I try to make, like if I am gonna have similar sizes, I try to make them in uh, a different main color. Like this one is, this one was, um, this one was that stone ochre and this one was the Pacific. And now I'm making one of a similar size in glass as the main color. And this is a really fun way to explore color generally because you're, you're gonna get a different result whenever you mix different colors together. And let's see, let's add some more of that. And then I'm gonna add gold in that spot in the bottom. And even though it's somewhat far away, it's still pushing those colors, so it's pretty cool. And I've been really like using the metallics in things like this. Okay, so I'm gonna actually go, let's, uh, let's go over here. I'm gonna make one that says long as this. Oh, oh, see now we have a little bit of bleeding, but I think that could lead to some fun results there. So I'm just gonna let that go. I'm gonna make this one a little bit lighter, add a little bit more water to my brush as opposed to pigment. Okay. And I'll kind of add to that that was flowing in there with some more stone ochre up there. Oh, and this was the darker color, so I need the lighter color. It's so fun to see how different things get pushed around here. And I try not to overdo it on the gold. I don't want too much there. So now we're gonna go back to stone ochre, which is kind of like a pinkish, um, pinkish beige maybe. And I'm gonna go back over here. So let's see. Let's make, I don't think we have any littler squares. So let's make, let's make some littler squares here. Again, making sure I have lots of water in there. And you would think by just kind of dropping color in there, it wouldn't really do anything interesting, but it definitely is. Okay, a little bit of that gold here. It's definitely pushing the water away. I'm gonna see if I can push that a little bit back into there. All right, let's do, let's do another smaller square here, or somewhat smaller. And I'm just basically gonna keep doing this until I fill the page. And that's kind of a what I would call a chunky gold in here. It might rub off a little bit. Um, I'll have to see once it's dried whether that will actually rub off there. Okay, then let's fill this area here. I'm gonna go with a rectangle. 
And this is it too, you know, you're not really measuring, you're just kind of going with whatever spaces are left on your paper. Um, but you don't want to go too small because then, you know, how are you going to use them? With the, with the first sheet that I made, I did make some really small squares and now they're still sitting around because I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to see what I can do with that. Just realized I wasn't putting a lot of gold in the middle of these, so I'll do that with that. All right, are we already back around to stone ochre? Yes, I think we are. Okay. So let's go here. I'm going to create another fairly large one, but I'm going to go a little bit more watered out with this one. So it has sort of a different effect. So basically I'm just adding, I'm leaving whatever pigment I have there and I'm just adding more and more water so that I can spread it around. And maybe add a little bit more pigment because we're getting kind of bare down here. And you could, you could actually wait until these squares like do one color and then let them dry and then put another color on just to see because it would be a completely different experience. The colors aren't going to blend together like this while it, when everything is, when each layer is dry, it's going to be a different effect than if, than if you did it all while it was wet. All right. So let's see, we don't have sort of a larger rectangle, so I think I'm going to do that here. I'm going to try and make this pretty pale, but add a little bit more color. And I suppose we could do this with circles too, but you wouldn't be using as much of the paper just because, you know, you'd have... Um, you can't fit circles together <laughs> the way you can fit squares and rectangles. And I think they'd be a little bit harder to work with in the collage that I'm doing with these. All right, down to the darker teal. But as you can see, I mean, this takes some time to do. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little one here, which I may connect with that one so that we have more bigger space down below. And I'll probably decide when I'm cutting it out whether I want to leave that small or if I want to connect it. Pretty happy with these color choices here. They're all very nice. Okay, so that was the darker one. We're back to the stone ochre. So here I'm just gonna create, oh, oops, I touched again. But again, you can fix that when you're cutting, so it's not an issue. But I'm going to create pretty big rectangle here. I'm going to make this one a little bit more saturated than the last one we did. This really teaches you a lot about your colors and how they flow and how they work together. Also uses up a ton of your paint. I think I may have said that already. But Okay. I just think it's so neat how that that pushes it away, even from so far over. I think it's definitely influencing the what we're ending up with there. Okay, and I'm gonna do another rectangle here as well, kind of the same size. And 
trying to go a little more saturated than on the last one using this color. This one's hard to get kind of saturated, but, and you can do this with any trio of colors. Um, I mean, you could even try something different than the two similar colorways and uh, one contrasting. You could do three completely different colors and you'd probably end up with some pretty interesting, pretty interesting results. Okay, I think I'm actually gonna put the gold up here, see how that pushes it. All right. Let's see now. Okay, I'm just gonna take up this whole space here with this and let's do a little bit more watered out on this one. I don't think we've done a lighter one with more water with this particular color. And I wanna use up as much of that paper as I can. Don't leave a lot of white space in between. And you're really seeing, even though I'm dropping these things, uh, these colors in little dots, you're really getting a different effect um, when it dries because it gets pushed around. Look at that, I was kind of railroading it into the center. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two more shapes here and then we're gonna finish up. So where am I? Okay. I think I'm gonna go down to like here. do sort of in the middle of saturated and watered down. You really do need to add a lot of water so that it'll flow. Okay, and I don't mind that it's inconsistent in opaqueness. Okay. But I had never used these three colors together, so I had absolutely no idea what they would look like when they are all together. Oh, it looks like we'll have one short of having all three colors represented one last time. We'll just have this one, but that's fine. I could have done two, but I kind of want to finish this up so that we can move on to the next step which I am at least going to start with you. It really depends on how quickly this paper can dry. Okay, and then one last, oh, I didn't put any gold in here. So let's do that now. Oh, that's interesting. Now that it's dried a little bit, it does not flow as much. Okay. So I'm rinsing my brush off. And these first ones that we did should be almost dry. Yeah, I think this one's workable now. So I'm going to flip this around. And then I'm going to move my watercolors off to the side. And so I will at least start with a few of these, um, the ones that are dry, and then um, if the others are not dry yet, you know, you'll get the idea. I'll, I'll cut out the ones that I do do. So for, do do, anyway. So I will um, mark on these with these three different pens. So one is a white Posca that has a really fine tip. Um, and this is essentially just acrylic paint in a marker form. So I like to shake those up real good. I think this one might be starting to run out because I use it a lot. And then I'm using the Molotov Gold Marker, which also needs to be shaken up. This should have more, more stuff left in it. And then I am using a Micron PN. And this is, um, it's a dark blue color. I don't, I don't know if it's called Indigo. Does it say on here? I don't see... That it says on here but um, this is not black it is dark blue i found that the dark blue looks a little less stark um, i'm actually going to start with this little one here and i'm going to start with the pn 
So um, this one I think I'll just do, so I'll go around like twice and make, actually let's go around three times and make little marks there. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. Um, okay, let's go to this one up here and I'm going to do little hatch marks. And sometimes I'll combine hatch marks and um, sort of a border around the edge. Okay. And I think this one, yeah. I'm gonna do just a little border with this one too. And then I'm gonna move on to the white marker. I think I'm gonna do the white marker on this one because I think it might show up a little better than on the, um, I'm gonna do little circles. And, and this marker you can kind of push it down. Sometimes it shows up a little lighter if, if it's running dry, like mine probably is. Um, so it's just repetitive marks that I'm making. I'm not trying to make these perfect. I just want to have a repetitive shape around. And because of all the variation we have, in the paint itself, it's gonna look different. Let me see if I can get some more paint out of that. And you know, if some lines are darker than others, that's fine with me too. It's all just to enjoy the process. It's really not about perfection. Yeah, I may have to, I may have to get another one of these smaller Poscas. You also don't need to use a Posca if you're if you're looking for a white marker. You can. Um, I really like the Signo Uniball white pens. Those are really great too. And I'm wondering if the opacity of this paint, or this watercolor paint, is also messing with. Okay, I'm just going to finish this one if I can. And these last ones might be a little faint. I just have one more row, man. Yeah, and we may just have to have them fade there. Okay, so let's move on to the gold marker. And let's do this corner one here. So let's see, maybe I'll just do a border on this one and see how that looks. And then we'll just do one. I think that one border looks pretty nice. Let's see, what else do we have dry here? I think, I think that this one is dry. So I'm gonna do a little tick marks on this one. And I found that I kind of lean towards the same kind of marks again and again that are just really relaxing for me to do. Okay, I think I'm just going to do this one, but you get the idea. Um, I mean, you could do spirals, you could do um, little squares, you could do little triangles, you can do any any little mark you think would look good. And then I'm gonna get some scissors out. These are Hobby Mate scissors. I think I got these from, they're made in Japan, but I think I got them in, uh, from Jet Pens. So let's see, so I'm just gonna cut up here. I'll actually cut this whole thing off, even though those top ones are not dry. Those still need to dry before 
accents end up on them. Okay. And I actually kind of like where this has faded. Um, and you know, I might cover that up or I might cover up this part so that it looks intentional. All right, and then I'm gonna cut these two. I'm basically just gonna cut the ones out that we already marked so that you can see what the end result would look like. I'm gonna cut out this one last one here. And this is essentially why you have that white space is so that you can have a place to cut that makes sense. Okay, that one is close, so I'm gonna pull it. All right, and I think this one I'm gonna make as a two piece. All right, and if you think there's a little too much white space on these afterwards, you can always cut the extra white off or you can leave it, it's up to you. Um, so yeah, it's just whatever you wanna do with that. So you could have that like this, or you could have it like this in the final one. And then um, where are my little birdies here? So then the next step I would be taking, let's just pull out one at random here. So the next thing I would do is I would just see where does this little birdie fit? He actually looks pretty good right there. Um, you know, does he fit here? No, this piece is probably a little too small for that bird. Yeah. Um, would he fit here? He would, but would it look better the other way? Yeah, I think he would look better that way. Um, what about just with this gold border here? Yeah, I think he looks pretty good there too. Um, and then with the little dots, I don't like him as much on here, although I do like it better with the faded there, but I think that, you know, the first one was the best one on this one. So I would probably pair him with this one and then I would just glue stick this down and then fit some other elements on there of collage, fussy cut collage fodder. And that would be it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson today or this paint with me, whatever you want to call it. It's more of a paint with me than a lesson because I'm not really teaching you anything and it's not really groundbreaking. But um, but I just love this process and I love the results. Um, these were actually three really great colors together. Um, so I was really excited by how these worked out. And I don't, it's probably just my pen going bad, but sometimes if, because these, these, um, these watercolors dry a little bit gritty, not gritty, but you know, a little matte. Um, and I wonder if the white pen just wasn't writing too well on those, but, um, and actually let's see, is, does the gold rub off? Yeah, a little bit. You might not be able to see that, but I can see that it's rubbing off a little bit. Um, but I don't think it's going to be too bad because there's only a little bit of it there for an accent. All right. Well, that's all I had for you today. Thanks for joining. And I hope to see you next time. Feel free to, subs to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And until next time, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.